Hi, welcome back to Tiny Garage Fabrication. Back to work on the 1972 Chevy C10. Now today we're going to work on some rust. It's not full rust repair. It's not a cut and replace. It's just kind of a uh, a patch. Um, this is something that a lot of people would do or could do. And the reason I'm doing it on this is because it is a very difficult area of the truck to actually fully repair. There's multiple layers that come together in this one spot. And you'll see when we get there. It's the channel at the top of the cowl. Now the repair we're doing isn't permanent, but once again, this is my shop truck. I'm not bringing this up to a concourse restoration. If it gets down the road and doesn't leak water into the cab, then I'll be happy about that. That said, we should be all done talking. Now let's get to work. All right, so here's some of the stuff we're gonna work on today. This rust here, I'm really not doing anything to it. I'm just gonna try to treat it a little bit and then shoot some rust reforming paint over it, as well as clean up and kind of do the same thing inside the cowl. And this right here is the area I was talking about. So you've got the cowl section, uh, the upper cowl, you've got the inner cowl section, and the firewall. All three of these pieces come together right here. So it's a very difficult repair, many, many layers. But this is just in pretty rotten shape. Um, you can just see it's it's not doing very good. And as we get along, there's, there's some holes that go down. Now ultimately this actually leads into the cab. And there's a few holes over here that go into the cowl area inside here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean all this stuff up. I'm going to try to bust up some of the rust with some, uh, some rust dissolving gel, some navel jelly. And then once all that's done, I'm going to spray it with some rust reforming paint. And then I'm going to lay down a thick bead of urethane seam sealer across all of this just to kind of encapsulate it. And then hopefully it'll last, you know, the better part of, you know, five to ten years. We'll see. This is one of those spots that I really wanted to fix. Maybe I'll end up just like cutting and riveting a plate over it. And then kind of the same thing on the other side. Maybe just make it kind of decorative. A little aluminum plate or something. I don't know. But we'll just see how that affects functionality of the truck. Because there are some spots like this that uh, I'm just not going to fix at all. You know, so why go hard up here if I'm going to do nothing down here? All right, let's get to it. Now, the first step is to go over this with a wire brush and remove any excess or flaking rust. And then I'm going to use shop air to blow it all out. Here is the rust dissolving gel, also commonly referred to as navel jelly. This kind of depends on who makes it, I suppose. But we brush this in here and let it sit for a fair amount of time. Now I'm using a flap wheel on my grinder to go over the sharp edges on the frame, just trying to knock those down and smooth them out. It will make the paint adhere better and hopefully lead to just a better finish overall. And it gave me something to do while this rust dissolver did its thing. Now, rinse it all off with some water. Try to get as much of it out of there as I can. After it's rinsed, I'm going to blow the excess water off with some shop air. And we'll take a look at it. Now, it doesn't really appear as if it did a whole heck of a lot. It certainly didn't, you know, make the rust disappear. But if it did any neutralizing, then, you know, I'll be happy with that. Just got done running over everything with a heat gun to dry it out as good as possible. Now I'm going to do one final clean. I'm going to shoot it all with brake clean just to get any other you know oil and residuals out and then I'm going to spray it with a rust reforming paint. I don't know if it actually does anything but it'll uh, make me feel better. At least give it a base coat of something. And then the cowl section, not to include any of the firewall, but from inside this dip and back, I'm going to paint this all black. Because that's where the majority of the rust is. Plus, I don't like when you can, you know, it's, it's dark blue and light blue. And you can see in the vents of the cowl, and I'd rather just kind of black out that look. So we're going to mask and cover the cowl, the main cowl face itself. And then spray this with some Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. 
Now Project Farm recently did a video, actually this week as I was editing this, comparing different types of rust preventative spray. And this particular one, as cheap as it is, actually performed like third best and that was only behind some much more expensive ones including Pore 15. Now the 3M seam sealer, this stuff's uh, really good, fairly hard to use, definitely messy. I'm going to go ahead and use this seam sealer to cover everything in the cow, just kind of, you know, slather it in this ditch. It should bridge all of those holes and cover up all of those flaking edges where the panels were kind of coming apart from each other. Well, it may not necessarily be pretty, but I've got seam sealer across this whole thing. This stuff is very hard to, uh, you know, completely smooth out. So it just kind of is what it is. I gotta let this sit for about a day and tomorrow I'll come in and clean and paint this upper firewall section and then probably paint the frame rails while I've got the black going and then I'm gonna work on the firewall. Now while that seam sealer dries, enjoy this little montage I threw together of upgrading my parts washer. If you have experience with these cheap Harbor Freight or Amazon parts washers, you know that the pumps that come with them are absolute trash. I ordered a much bigger pump off of Amazon and now I need to figure out a way to contain it and make it work properly with the design of the rest of the washer. And this is what I came up with. So if you remember from last episode, my pressure washer died, so washing things has been a struggle, and it is so nice to be able to have a real parts washer with actual solvent back in my life. And look at this thing go. Now that I've got nice clean parts, I can finally get to making them look decent. A little bit of primer, and then some 
gunmetal gray for the spindles as well as some of the other suspension components and then we're just doing semi-gloss black for a lot of the other components after we get them all cleaned and prepped and everything. Now for prepping the upper control arms, these rivets need to be ground out and then smashed out with an air hammer or a punch and chisel if you don't have one. And new ball joints simply drop right in place and then they bolt in with a nut and a bolt that is usually included with the ball joint. I'm going to do the lower ball joints. This thing is just absolutely just passed. This one's in a lot better shape. Looks like it may have been replaced at some point in time. You can tell it's pretty solid to move. Also, this boot looks like uh, an aftermarket boot. So this is probably replaced at some point in time. It may have been the only suspension component ever replaced on this truck, given the condition of everything else. I've got an old front wheel drive wheel bearing. I'm gonna use that as a cup to sit underneath. And then hopefully I can just drive straight down on this. If not, I'll need to get some adapters and rings to just kind of build up so I can press on this part. Anyway, this whole bottom piece presses out of the arm and we'll get to that in a sec. put this thing back in and simply presses in. I've got a slightly smaller uh, wheel bearing ring. It's on this side. Right, well, due to the size of the bump stop right here, it's kind of getting in the way. I went ahead and took the uh, wheel bearing cup that I did have, as well as another one, welded them together, made it taller. Now, I'll be able to get this thing done. Oh, pretty much good. Got a little nick right there that may affect putting the rubber boot on. So you just can't see it, a little nick right there. That's from where I kind of ran into these inner rings. Maybe I'll try this side next time. And here's the part where I realized that I didn't actually film an outro for this video, so we'll just go ahead and voice over while the paint dries here. Not a whole lot to say. I'm glad that these parts are finally clean, finally get some paint on them, and this will lead up into the next video and the video after where we get everything really freshened up and looking good then we can get on to some actual mechanical fixes. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, leave me comments so that I can do a better job than forgetting to film outros and such. And that's it for today everybody, I appreciate you watching, see you next time.